I know you've heard so many things now, and everything that you've heard, I've pretty much agreed with. And there's a, I drove what, five and a half hours to get here. We live in Mauriceville, Texas, which is down where Rita came through in mm -hmm. 2005, around the coast of the Sabine River over there. My wife and I have been married 20 years. My wife is originally from the Philippines. We have two children. I have a 19-year-old. I have an 18-year-old in March 3rd. So we have a family just about to graduate. Both of them are about to graduate this year. Me, I served in the military. I'm a veteran. I served in Texas State, uh, Texas Army National Guard. I served in 2000, between 2004 and 2007, three years. 2005, I was activated and sent to Kosovo for one year. We went to Fort Hood in 2005 and trained up there in 113 degree weather. And when we left, it was about freezing. So, And then we went to Germany, stayed there a couple of weeks, and we went to Kosovo and served there for the whole year. Now, during that service, I, I was able to take advantage of a political science course with a gentleman that was my professor there. He was from Romania. He grew up in World War II. I had a different perspective from him about what is happening in government in the United States than you will hear in the United States schools in the indoctrination that we're being taught. First of all, he that has it here, let him hear. Our 1776 government does not exist. Anything we're doing now to be elected into these offices for people like myself, for people like women that are independent or even libertarians, or even anybody running a Republican ticket or a Democrat ticket, their access, there may be some good people that are actually trying to get in there and do the right thing. And those people will not get very far. Like myself, we have a very stacked deck. You asked something earlier, what is it going to take? What kind of plan do I have to get out there and, and get my name out there? I'm not taking any money from anybody. That means individuals, corporations, PACs, whatever it may be. It's your responsibility and it's my responsibility to get out there and take care of doing, taking care of business and getting back to the 1776 Constitution that we were given. Okay? This right here, and when I, my view of this right here is oneness. Going back to a, so a source that was given to us and provided to us by a God that would take care of us if we follow Him. He's the first source that we have. And it's Him that we have to put our trust in so that we can do this. We have this one source here, and when I look at the divisions that Republicans have caused, the Democrats have caused, and any other different parties, I am not for party. I am, I'm, I'm, the more I dig into the Constitution, I don't see them saying, you divide yourselves up and you form yourselves up in particular groups. This is the source. This is the one source. This is what unites us as Americans, as citizens. The 14th Amendment started all this. In the 14th Amendment, we, for, for 237 years, we have government that's been in place. We have laws upon laws upon laws to protect laws to protect laws. We have to make a law to protect the Constitution. I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. Every time I see this happening, there's some code words out here whenever the whenever they speak in, in Washington now. In the interest of the United States, that has nothing to do with our national security. In, in 1868. 14th Amendment was ratified by executive order. It was unconstitutionally ratified. It still has not been ratified to this day, from what I'm understanding. The, the two-thirds of the states did not ratify it. What that did was take our nation, which was founded upon capitalism, and turned it into corporatism. And they have been following suit ever since. Now, when they enacted and established the Federal Reserve, that just sealed the deal. Instead of taking and being cap, and cap, you know, capitalist, they now have taken this and this corporatism and they have these bankers that are actually controlling things. So we have now a nation. <coughs> you were talking about these ExxonMobil that uh, Tom Glass worked for and you were scared about that. Why do you think ExxonMobil does what the government says to do? ExxonMobil does what the government says to do because the federal government now owns about 70% of all the corporations in America. Okay? This right here, 
I hope a lot of people hear this, what I'm saying here, because it's being recorded, and I will put this out. The plan that I am asking you to help me to do, and the deck, as, like I said, the deck is stacked against me. When this election comes up here in March, when the primaries happen, what's going to happen is there's probably going to be a runoff. But when this election comes up, if there's not, they have to get 50% plus one vote. That gives me four months to go out and get 55,000 signatures. I'm not asking for anybody to go stick yard signs out. Get on Facebook. Use the social networking. Use blogging if you have access to blogging. I'm on national talk shows right now. Um, you have the Republic of Texas. I've been on it a number of times. Been on Raging Elephants Radio with Doc Green a number of times. Who's heard of me before and has not met me and who's found out heard about me on Facebook? I think I've heard of Gary Gossetti with TNN or anything like that. I, I don't, uh, I'm not with the Texas National Movement, but I did go to the event in Austin, and there's been a number of Texas National Movements people there. So the thing is, when this election comes up, I'm either going to have four months or I'm going to have 30 days. You just understand, I want you to all understand, everybody, this system is rigged. It's like going to a casino over in Louisiana, Lake Charles, or wherever you want to go in the casino, they have the game rigged. They don't want us to take back our 1776 government. It doesn't exist. It's poor. And trying to get, it's, it's pretty much pointless. I'm sorry to say that, but it pretty much is. And the only way that we're going to get this nation back is civil disobedience. We're going to have to say no. It's not going to be the rights of the states coming back in the states. The governors, they're, they're cowering down. Now, Kathy, she gets in there. I don't see that she would probably cower. But the thing is, even one of this, this, we have to say no. Individually, we have to stand up and start collectively and add number to number to number and joining together and tell this government no. May the 16th, there's going to be Operation American Spring. You've heard of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you could get involved in it, we're going. go. Okay. This is the only way we're going to take our nation back. They're not going to do it. So let me warn you. Like I said, if you've read any of the, uh, the warnings about Operation American Spring, it may get nasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's going to be, you're either going to be committed or you're not. But it's the only way we're going to get our nation back. I said, and about, about a year and a half ago, I woke up. I worked for 20 years in the medical field doing phlebotomy. You know what a phlebotomist is? Yep. All right, that's all I did. I was the <laughs> professional vampire. I had people begging for me to draw their blood. I had nurses coming to me saying, please come help me get this blood from this child. My wife is a nurse. She's been a, she's a dialysis nurse now. She's been five years in the place doing dialysis now. I've, I've worked 20 years in public service, face to face, greeting people that came into the nurse field. This government from 1868, every government, I don't care how, every president has had, there's an agenda. The agenda, why do you think they don't read the bill that are put into Congress? They don't have to. Mm -hmm. Their agenda is already preset. They don't run this country. Who above them runs this country? They are bought. Every single one of them. Every one of those people up there are bought. One way or another. If they aren't bought, they're going along with it by complete they're complacent. They, they they agree with what's happening. They're not saying no. It's not what they're saying. They may be up there saying the right thing. But it's not what they're saying. It's the things that they're not saying that's the problem. They're not saying that this government, they're not telling the people that this is not our government. They're going along with it. It's status quo. They get in, they get elected, they get their $175,000 a year. That's a salary for a senator. Top that off, go sit on a committee. Here's a credit card. Maybe a million dollars sitting on that credit card. So sit on about five, six, seven, eight of them. You might get up to sixteen. You might get up to six million dollars that you can spend without discretion. Just, I needed to do this. We took. Them, why do you think the IRS got busted? That came out in the open. Yeah. They don't care. It's our money. It's our government. Like I said, it's been heard so many times. It's said so many times. It's our government. We, the people, are the ones that are the rightful masters of this federal government. The state. People, we are the rightful masters. We can tell the people, we can tell the government how it's funded. Okay. One of the things I want to get to real quick before I lose my track, my friend thought it's the NDA Common Core Patriot Act. Right there, those those are three things right there that have already set in place in motion for dealing with and indoctrinating the indoctrination is already there. Okay.
Okay, so you're military, you decide that you want to step up and say something against the government, and that, uh, I'm going to say the government now, the federal government, I'm going to start calling it, and I want everybody to start understanding it is the de facto government. Exactly. It is not the federal government, because this is not our 1776 government that we have. And I'm very, I'm, I get very emotional about it, I get very upset, are you angry about it? Definitely. I mean, I'm one of you. So these things have been set up in place that if you oppose this de facto government and it gets to the point, they've already got it in place and you can see it's not conspiracy anymore. You look around. That if you don't go along with their system, it goes down. There's a nasty there's a nasty storm brewing. And I don't know when it's gonna happen. It's just like I don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back, but I know it's coming, that's gonna happen. Amen. I know there's a storm coming in America and it's gonna be nasty. I've had Every, I've heard every single speaker talk on this. I'm a Second Amendment, okay? I'm a Second Amendment supporter, okay? I want you to do me a favor, Kathy. Read the Second Amendment for me. And I know you're going to get it whenever I have a reading. Okay. Amendment 2, right to bear arms, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What does it say? A well-regulated militia exactly. being, necessary. being necessary for the freedom of state. You are a citizen of this state. You are a citizen of the nation. We, we decided by agreement to be a part of the federal government, to have this and make this federal government. It's ours. It belongs to us. Okay. It's a contract. Exactly. Yeah. That contract has been broken. And we have told them very many times, and they have been warned very many times by not just me or anybody else, that if they continue their path that they're on, that there's going to be a revolution. Mm -hmm. I've seen the videos. I'll watch them. Yeah. We are the people. You, between the age of 70 and 70, the Texas State Constitution has in its constitution a militia, about a militia. The federal government, they put it in place for the teeth of this right here to protect it so we can keep liberty and freedom. It's there. What we are being taught, though, it is about the right to keep and bear arms. And it's way more than the right to keep and bear arms. It's way more. Each one of you need to be united and joined with a militia. They are here. TexasStateMilitia.org, Texas Minutemen, pick, take the pick. Make sure it's a Second Amendment militia that's going to protect the Constitution and Bill of Rights. It is to protect your community. To, if anything goes down, you already have a system in place. Why do you need FEMA? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to protect the borders in Texas? Federal government, get out. Okay? Get the federal government out of it. Sheriff's Department is the only constitutional law enforcement there is in the United States. Everything else is unconstitutional. Cities that set up and put their own governments in, that's the police state. DHS is unconstitutional. That's um, Washington's own private army. Okay? Right. You, can't, you can't deny it. It's his own private army. Now they're even arming up the Postal Service inspectors, getting them and buying them arms and weapons. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so what's, what are you going to do in, as an individual? to get it back. How many people are you going to go out and recruit? How many people are you going to try to wake up and say, look, this guy here, as I said, the deck is stacked against me. How many people are you going to go out there and say, hey, David Smith needs your help. He's an independent candidate and the deck stacked against him and he needs 55,000 signatures. He's either going to have four months or he's going to have 30 days. I'm asking for a lawyer to go up and put a temporary restraining order or something, injunction, whatever, to stop that section that the state has put in place that limits independence from getting on the ballots. It's unfair, it's unconstitutional. It's taking the voting process away. It takes the voting process away from every one of us. We can't get in there and break the chain and break it and, and go in there and restore government because they don't want it restored. And there's people that are in the world that want to see this nation fall. The Muslims, I, I'm sorry, I don't agree with Islam, no. okay? I don't agree with the, the tactics that Sharia law has. I don't I agree with the way they treat women. I don't agree with everything they got. It, I don't agree with it. 
It's not something that's good for them. It's not something that's good for the nation. It's not good for anybody. Christianity, they want to shut it down. How many times has Christianity really hurt someone that somebody really understands and knows the Bible? Jesus said, do not fight for my kingdom. I'm not going to go out there and start a war over Christianity. I'm not going to force you to do it. So that's that's where our, our nation was founded upon principles that were based upon in, in, in the scripture. Those, those scriptural things are there, and they've never been there. Nothing has ever been there that would harm you in any way if we followed it. So... <clears throat> The 17th Amendment, you asked about that. 17th Amendment, I shouldn't even be up here asking to do what I'm doing. I shouldn't even be asking you for your vote. 16th Amendment, shouldn't be there. Obamacare, ADA, shouldn't even have been on the table up for discussion. All the departments and agencies that the federal government has put in place that are unconstitutional need to go. There's probably 100, maybe less, maybe more, that are unconstitutional. And the federal government has no business involved in being ownership of land and doing the things they do like we were talking about. They go in and there is no problem. We had the best health care in the world. People were coming from all over the world, everywhere, to come over here to get treated. Right. What happened? The federal government got involved and says and caused the problem. They everything you see in this nation, the downfall of the stock market. They're the cause of it because, guess what, it's corporatism. They, they cause it. The dollar goes down, dollar goes up. Well, your dollar goes down, that dollar went up, it all does this. It works like a balance. If it goes down, you sell out, and you lose money, guess where it went? They rake it off and they put it in their coffers. You ever call, heard of selling short? That's really into trading. Mm -hmm. They sell short, they rake it off, and they put it in their coffers. That's what I'm going to get to there. Who wants to keep continuing being taxed? None. Is it a system that we even had before 1913? Nope. It was a tariff taxation. The founding fathers had a tariff taxation, and they did not tax our incomes. They didn't keep tax. We're almost taxed, what, 70 to 80 percent now of our income, depending upon where you live, when you add up local, state, and federal taxes, and whatever other taxes there are, road taxes, gas taxes, whatever it may be. There's 63. There's so many taxes. That Maybe more since the 40,000. Yeah. It? It takes so many. It, they take so much of your money that you work hard for. Yeah. They work. We work. They take. They live fight on the hog up in Washington. Mm -hmm. They are using us to get them the, in the ivory towers and sit up there when they are the, supposed to be the servants. They are supposed to be the servants. We're the we're, we're, it is exactly the way it is now. The because collateral. when they change the person to corporation, if you've done a little research, like I said, I'm not a. <laughs> Not even close to being a politician. And I, if you call me a politician, I'm going to be very angry at you. Because <laughs> that is not what I am. We are citizens. And we are, if you're going to run for those offices, you must be a servant. To, and you are the boss. I'm one of you. And they, they don't listen to me. I, I call them up. I don't even waste my time signing petitions. I don't even waste my time even calling them anymore. I don't waste my time sending them letters because it does no good. I have seen no good from any of it. All the petitions that you see flying around on Facebook. But let me tell you, something. social media, social media, if used effectively, can work. It can work in a heartbeat. And you can send a message by sending out a type. You can send a banner. I don't have to, I don't have to give you a bunch of yard signs. You can put that banner in all of your friends, and you can share my page to every single friend. You've got 1,500 friends. You send it to 1,500 friends. I've done it. I've done it to people's pages to send my, you know, I'll see something that's very important. I'll send that page out 15, 16, 1,700 people, 2,000 people. As long as it takes me to sit down and send it out to them to get it in front of them, then they have the choice. I can't force them to do it, but I got it in front of their face. That's right. Okay? That's what I'm asking you to do. You individually can go out and find 10 people and say, look, check his page out. I've met him personally. Come on, this guy's got an idea. Leadership? Leadership is not about what I've gone out there and done. I went to college and got a degree. I'm going, I will have had some college. I've got some common sense. And that's what we need in Washington. We need some common sense. We're talking about Ted Cruz getting up there and him being in the out like the Alamo. Guess what? I'm not even in there and I'm standing in the Alamo right now. Because the deck is stacked against me and all odds. 
And I, everybody asked me, he said, what do you think your chances are? I said, I have no idea what my chances are. I said, I can't predict the future. God's, it's in God's hands. All I'm going to do is get out there and work. Amen. I'm going to get out there and talk to you. I drove five and a half hours to get here. And I'm going to get out of here when it's done. I'm going to drive five and a half hours back home. The next one that Kathy sets up, I'm going to be there for her. She wants to set up in Houston. I'm going to be there. She's done a fantastic job. And the people that have been invited, I wish they could have been here. But the people that are here, I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you being here. So we need to get back to the 1776 form here. It's broken. We have the standard. We have the mold. And we can put it back. We don't have to pick up the pieces and try to glue it back together. We don't have to do that. We have this. We can start over. If you ever has anybody done ceramics, yeah. okay, you can understand what I'm saying. You take the raw material, you pour it in there, and you make another one. You put it in the kiln, and you fire it up, and out comes product. You have a new government. We can do it, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a fight because these like, these guys aren't going to get out of Washington easy. They have been given a credit card that they can do whatever they want to with, and they can spend whatever they want to with it. And they can go anywhere in the world with it. John McCain going to the Syrian rebels and saying, we need to give them weapons. And, saying they're, and then they turn around and come back here and try to take all away from us. Yeah. Right. Excuse me. Okay. Ain't happening. You want to use those Syrian rebels to take down that government. And I said it a long time ago when they were saying Assad is using chemical weapons and this and that and doing all this. I'm sorry, but I can read between the lines. Right. And the interest of the United States tells me that I can read between the lines. It has nothing to do with our national security. No. That's a civil war they were fighting. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's Muslim on Muslim. It's a civil war. We should not have even been involved in it. Mm -hmm. Iraq, same thing. I appreciate every one of our soldiers. Our soldiers are being lied to every single time we send them out to war. That, that gets me. Right. Mm -hmm. When you tell a soldier to go defend this, and it's nothing about this, and they believe this, and you want to ask them why they're committing suicide, then they get told by people that are saying they are Christians that it is against Christian values to go out and kill somebody. I'm sorry, murder is wrong. Right. But defending our freedom and liberty is not. No. Our soldiers are being used and abused. Mm -hmm. They're sent to do corporation wars, not to defend our freedom. Let's bring our soldiers back home. Amen. You want to get rid of phase out and replace taxation? We can do it. Since we are the ones that actually fund the government, we say this is how you're going to get paid, guys. All right, you want $175,000 salary to work up there as a senator? This is how you're going to get paid. Since the government already owns about 70% of our corporations, this is the revenue that they generate that they don't tell you about. Mm -hmm. Budget? Why do you think they don't even talk about budget any longer? Yeah. They say we're broke. Mm -hmm. Really? Do you know how much the federal government really makes? Hmm. Go to CAFR, Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, and anybody that will not go looking into this because we own the government and say this is how we're going to fund the government, is not giving you any justice whatsoever in how we are going to take our country back. If they deny that we are the ones that actually fund the government and that we are the ones that are in control of this government, it's the way it should be, the 1776 government, because the 17th, the 1776, the de facto government here now does not want that because they have the credit card that gives them every single penny that they want. You go to CAFR1.com and you look up some information there. You get the comprehensive annual financial report of Washington, D.C. It's done every year. Everybody keeps saying audit the Fed, audit the Fed. Guess what? It's already audited mm -hmm. every year. We have public records showing that we have the numbers, the gross income of the federal government. You have also the net income, and you have the budget. You have everything, and all that money is listed. 
given some funky names that you don't understand what that money is going to or for or anything else, this program and that program, and you don't even really know anything about the program, you just said this program, dig a little deeper, follow the money, follow the money trail. Sorry, Capital One will like help you to understand that we can take actual, go back to capitalism in the United States. We can actually take those businesses, and we want to create business, stop taxation, stop, stop taxing the businesses, no more corporate taxes, no more income taxes, no more sales taxes, no more flat taxes, no more talk about it. Tax, you've taken one taxation, we're going to say, all right, we're going to take this taxation, we're going to turn it into this taxation. It's not logical to me, I don't understand it. Taking one form to another form. When we have a system that we can actually take and we can invest our own money that we have, that we have to put into those businesses and corporations. You do it with an IRA, okay? You take an IRA or a 401 and you put money into them for what? <laughs> what are they, what, whenever you put that money into that account, what is it for? Retirement. What are you doing? What, what's it doing? It's Nothing. Okay. Okay, I'm not saying tax retirement funds. I'm saying this is a tax. We're going to retire taxation. Okay, we're going to retire. We're going to phase it out and replace it with another form of funding our government. Take an IRA, you take a 401k, and you put your hard-earned money into it so that you can phase out and you can replace your working <coughs> income so that you can live comfortably and not have to work anymore. Okay, same way. We can take that money there. We have our earned income, the taxation and the money that's already up there. The federal government's already doing this. Go to Capital One. He'll show you how it's already working out. They own 70%, so they'll tell Microsoft, who thinks runs up Microsoft for real? Bill Gates? Nah. Bill Gates retired from that a while back. Somebody else runs that. They tell a corporation what to do nowadays. Guess what they do? Yes, Master. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why they don't like Walmart because they're why? not they're not they're not Walmart them. yet, and they, Walmart tends to fund their nose yep. at them. That's why Hobby Lobby has even done the same thing. They they mm -hmm. they're fighting against Hobby. Any corporation that's bucking the system, and that's it's not a conspiracy anymore. We can see it. It's bully. It's big, big brother bullying. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what the federal government. That's what the de facto federal government has become now. Mm -hmm. Big brother bully. Okay. And it's going to take civil disobedience. And they're going to take every single one of us to say, enough is enough. It doesn't have to be bloody. <laughs> I mean, I pay my, if, if tax, you know, a lot of people take the scripture and they say, pay your taxation, remember it to Caesar, what is Caesar's, okay? This was a group of people that was ruled by Rome, that were God's people. And he was under their thumb at that time, under Caesar's thumb. And Jesus says, it's his. He rules you, give it to you. Well, guess what? 1776 government, God, in his scriptures, they took his scriptures and, and saw that there was a system. I know some people don't, don't they want to fight that and buck that, but they saw that there was a system that worked very well that makes everybody have freedom, liberty, and they can pursue happiness. Okay? And they put this down in our document so we can find it. Take God out of this document, it doesn't work. They already told me that. Mm -hmm. They understood that. And tell me that uh, they were atheists. I'm sorry, they weren't. Go read the Federalist Papers or Anti-Federalist Federalist Papers. Read their diaries. They were not. They understood that there was a so that there was a divine creator out there that had intelligent design and made every single one of us. And we have somebody we're going to answer to when we die. Mm -hmm. We're going to have somebody to answer to while we're here, too, because we're going to suffer the consequences if we don't follow it, okay? So we get that tax retirement fund set up, and we invest it back into our businesses. This is going to create business everywhere. You make a business where they don't have to fork out taxation, taxation, and it hurts them. Take that money, put that into the corporations, and invest it in them. They win because they're successful. Because they're successful, that money flows into their coffers to flow in and pay. And guess what? We can even generate a revenue. What is it called? Whenever you whenever you invest in a stock market, you buy their stocks, then you get their 
dividends. Who can even get dividends? We could, we, it's our government. We, we can do this. Why not? Why can't we? Who says we, who's going to stop us if we actually say this is how we're going to do it? It's ours. It's supposed to be our government. We need to wake up and understand this, and we need to get more people's head out of the stands, out of the sand, turn the TVs off, start reading this, start getting around the table. We have family structure that is being destroyed and torn apart. Get the federal government out of, the de facto federal government out of teaching our children what this is all about when it's not what this is all about. I'm a little Cypress High School where my kids go to school. <laughs> Very fortunate they have a teacher. My daughter says, just like you, but older. <laughs> he, he, it's like all the time, the same thing. You can get me going when it comes to the Constitution and Bill of Rights, and I will talk your ears off. Keep me going, keep me going. I will just <coughs> very upset about what I'm seeing. And I'm not going to run around telling everybody that I'm getting involved in this as to be a senator because I'm angry. I am, but that's not the reason why I'm getting involved. Because as a leader... It's about influence. It's not about what I went out and got a degree in or what I did in the past. It's about influencing others to do the same thing that I'm actually looking at and waking other people up and saying, come on, let's go. I can either be an influence of bad or I can either, either be an influence of good. And I choose good. I don't want to go and be the person coming up here like what we're seeing. I don't want to lead in that kind of manner. I don't want to lead by an example of immorality and supporting things that my God in heaven is going to judge somebody for. That's my own personal decision there. The federal government, yes, no, no, they don't need to be involved in telling us how to be morally. That's not their business, but it's an individual responsibility. Exactly. And it puts also the Constitution says that, hey, in your community, you decide what is socially acceptable and what is not so acceptable in your communities. You can go around, somebody puts pornography in the storefront, you can go in there and you can raise a big fuss in your community and you can go to your town meetings and you say, I don't want that in that store and get it out. Because guess what? The ninth, the tenth, what we were talking about, led, left to the people to make the decisions what happens in there. But guess what? Now, like I said, you turn the wrong way, there are going to be consequences. And that's yeah, there was a lot said and I'm not going to harp back over all those different things. But again, we need to take personal responsibility. And that's why I'm stepping up and I want to be your senator here in the state of Texas. I want to act like a senator that was pre-17 amendment senator. I want to work with the actual Congress here in the state and the governor here in the state and work directly with them and say, what do you guys think? I don't have to act like theirs. I don't have to act like the, federal, the de facto federal government senators. Guess what? <laughs> they don't tell me what to do. You elected me. I can go back and I can say, pre 17th Amendment, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to work with our Congress, the people you're voting for to elect in this state. And I can say, I, because that's what the, sen what the senator is supposed to do is represent the state and the people of the state. Still, that's what their job is still to do. It's not to be in the hip pocket of Washington and them tell them this is what's going to happen in the state. If you want to secure the borders, Texas Army National Guard, okay, that's the governor, Texas State Guard, Texas Militia, okay, we have civilian forces, we have people down there on, on what is it, the Texas um, volunteers that go down, Texas yeah. Borders, yeah. 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 you got the Texas Minute Men, you got the Texas uh, Volunteers, you got a number of groups that are already going down there, okay, the militia is supposed to be funded by the Congress, it says it right here, do you think they're doing that? Nope. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what they told our governors, from what I understand, I've heard, I've heard, I haven't quite read the article yet, but I've heard from other people that they told the governors, you start firing up your militias and you start organizing your militias, I'm going to hurt you. Yep, yeah, I saw that. So, I saw that. <laughs> okay, why? Because if we unite and we become a civilian protection force and we get well regulated, like the Second Amendment says we're supposed to be, they're not going to be able to come in here and take away our freedom and liberty. That's the teeth of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the right to keep and bear arms. Stop. That, that is being pumped through the media, mainstream media, over and over and over. And it, 
doesn't say anything about militia. You never hear them say anything about militia. Nothing. Not a peep. Nothing positive. Nothing positive. Okay. Well, Look at what happened. You constitutionalist. She said she's a constitutionalist, right? That's constitutional. I'm for the Constitution. She should, she's for the Constitution. Is she going to object to the militia? Militia. Whenever she's elected, uh, am I going to object to the militia? Militia's the good. Well, those so weren't Second Amendment militias. They, yeah, no, I, they, I'm that's saying the, that's what yeah, the media that, used mm -hmm. to poison people's minds. Yeah. That's the mainstream media indoctrination. They just started and guess who owns mainstream media? They were also illegal reasons they went. Say again? There was, was also illegal reasons they went and tried to get information or tried to, to uh, overthrow the militias. Right. But the thing is, like I said, if you get involved with the militia, you make sure you check them out really well. Yeah. Okay? All right. I'm not saying you just go run and jump into anything that you. I'm, I am a militia leader in the Beaumont <laughs> area, Texas State Militia Beaumont Unit. I'm a squad leader. I'm E7. We have rank. Look, each captain is over, and we're autonomous. If you understand autonomous, this the actions of this militia unit in Beaumont do not reflect upon this militia. And yes, we are in co in communication with each other, and yes, there is a command structure. All the captains are like on a board, and if you do something wrong, there is punishment. Okay, we work with the sheriff's departments already in the state of Texas. Sheriff's Association is saying that Greg Abbott is supposedly on board. I, I don't know. I really don't know if he's all, all totally on board. Sorry. But, you know, this is the Second Amendment, and this is what the teeth of the Constitution. Civil disobedience is the only way we're going to get our country back. Any questions? So okay. you were saying that uh, uh, to expect trouble, basically, sure. for What uh have you ever watched the World War One video when MacArthur went in and took the World War One veterans out? Yeah. That's that, what you're thinking. Yeah. And it, and it absolutely. Also after World War Two, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They, well, that was and that was interesting to me because you, I was not familiar with that you until understand. it started making the rounds on the internet. Do you understand that was after the enactment of the Fourteenth Amendment and after mm -hmm. the enactment of the Federal Reserve, yeah. and it was after the enactment of the turning of America from yeah. capitalism to corporatism. Okay, corporatism. The next step is going to be socialism, communism. That's going to be total rule by the power, whoever has the most money, and that's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. And it's, wow. it's it's go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. But that, that, it's just a, it's, it's just the vicious circle of the world. It's human nature. When you give people, when people get power, exactly. There was this, we watched you talked about you talked about Greek. I said we watched the called the pot or whatever something the pot on on Netflix. And every time they hurt somebody, the money went in the pot. And were you know you could just make as much money. And eventually it was only giving them a couple of dollars for hitting each other and start going out hitting them. You know greed just takes over. You know destroy you. Why would they do that to us there? Excuse me? Why would they do you think like they would kill us if we go to Operation Spring? In Very Washington, possible. DC? But why? What would be Gen the General problem? General Valley and Colonel Riley have already warned you about it. That's the, if you if you read Operation American yeah, Spring. Yeah, I've heard about it, but why? What is the reason behind that? False flag. It's power. They're not gonna let their power go. Okay? But let me let me there are many in 1776, how many people died? In the Civil War, how many people died? <laughs> I don't fight a, you don't fight a war <coughs> just to go conquer a territory. You fight a war for self-defense. War is self-defense. That's mm -hmm. my in my eye. That's the way I see it, and that's the way I see it in, the, in the scriptures. Even you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just a common just every I worked 20 years, like I said. I'm not. I didn't go out there and get educated. I took bits and pieces of information and I was self educated myself. Wouldn't it be better if we just stayed here and did stuff here than go there and get massacred? <laughs> they want you they, <laughs> they want you to go to Austin too. They want you to go to Austin too. For those that can't go. Yeah. For those that can't go to Washington, yeah, they're doing a rally in Austin as well. As well. But this is a this is a no end date. as you know, it is a no yeah. end date. Several See ways. that's that's yeah, kind of a problem. I know that I've read that and I thought the state was retired. I mean it, it's probably going to be people moving in and out. That's what I was hoping it would be. That's 
you know, be up there. Long as there's as long as, and, and after, yeah. after 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 a while, eventually there'll probably be more and more once it starts working. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I really yeah. don't know how it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. But we're going to find out May 16. Yeah. And it's going to be after <coughs> the primaries. And we're going to find out after the primaries whether I have 30 days or whether I have four months. Okay. And I am absolutely. 100% constitutional, and if I get in there, and anybody that's up there right now, my view is if you're not 100% and you're going along with what's happening and you're not saying anything about it, and you're not calling them out. See, that's what I was saying earlier, get back to rephrase that is a little bit, is if they're up there, they're up there telling us all kind of stuff. It's a dog and pony show. Okay, they tell us what they want, what, the, what we want to hear. That, you know, you got somebody over here telling you one thing, you got another one over here telling you, and it's bits and pieces, okay? It's what they're not saying and what they're not doing. It's the fruit, you know, it's either the good fruit or the bad fruit. You can see it. Just because they say something and doesn't mean anything to me anymore. It doesn't mean a thing. They're, the voice, the words that come out of their mouth are empty. Yeah. They have no meaning to me whatsoever because I don't see action. Yeah. And, yeah. It, 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 I'm, I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to those things because every one of you see the same thing. And mm -hmm. I'm different than any candidate that you may have ever seen. You can go to my Facebook page. You can look at it. I've got my phone number there, my cell phone number. You can call me anytime. I don't care. It, I'm wide open. Call me. Find out. Ask me a question. I'll answer it. And it's going to be there for all the world to see. This video, I'm going to post it. It's going to be there for all the world to see at me if they want. I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to tell you what the Constitution says. It doesn't make any difference to me. I'm, I'm, my kids are grown up, and my kids are going to have kids very possibly, and this is not going to be a very pretty world to live in if it continues the way it is. It is a de facto government. It right. is a yeah, false government. It, we need to get back to the true government, and it's here. I said we need to remake it again. I'll just add one thing that you said. Uh, if you don't want to read the Federalist Papers or, or some of the other things to figure out why they're doing this, read the Communist Manifesto. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Divide. And Divide and conquer. Yeah. Yes. There's like three Ds. And, you know, I've got it on one of my pages. But uh, on my Facebook, you can find on there, I've got a, a, a team, a Senate, a Senate 2014 uh, Senate team that you can be part of, and you can add people to that group as they as you recruit them. You can add them to that group. See, I'm using social networking, and that's the only source that I'm using besides getting out there and talking. I've been asked to be a host on uh, the the New Republic of Texas half hour show every Friday. This Friday I wasn't because they had a 50th birthday, and so next we are 50, the 50th airing. So they're going to have that. I'll be on that. But um, Raging Elephants Radio, I'm on. I've got the interviews on there. There's a one-hour interview. Scott Green has asked me a number of for, uh, questions for one hour, so you can hear what I've had for questions on that. Secession, I'm not pushing secession. I mean, that's if, if all the people chose that, that's what you're going to do. If, if, if that's what all the people chose you're going to do, I'm not going to stand in your way. I mean, that's not, hello, it's the right of the people to make that decision. And it's happening all over the world. And if they fight us on it, kind of hypocritical, don't you think? There's nation states popping up all over the world, everywhere. Everywhere you turn around, why do you think we went to Kosovo? <coughs> I think that's our plan B. So, yeah, I mean, that's possible. Mm -hmm. But see, this right here set it up so that each one of us were already independent states and we're already, you know, sovereign. So, yeah. what's the problem? Why? I mean, what's the real necessity of, of seceding? I mean, that's, that's why I say we're already a sovereign state, a sovereign state, so we can tell the federal government, like I said, if we're in the guidelines of this, this is their guide. This is for us to make them stay within these boundaries, and we have not done it. We failed miserably at it, but communists said this is what was going to happen. They weren't, you know, and guess what? Islam, and I, I'm sorry, he, he, walks, he walks in there and says, I'm not a, I'm not a Muslim, I'm, I'm a... Christian and all kind of stuff like that. I'm liar. Yeah. I, I don't care your actions. Muhammad Cassius Clay. Yeah, Everybody knows Cassius Clay. Why did he change his name to Muhammad Ali? Mm -hmm. Converted to Islam. So what was what was our president? Our very de facto, de facto president. Why did he change his name? 
Why do you take that name if he wasn't going to do that? Okay, that the the fruit the the, the tree the tree the fruit off the tree. You can't uh, there's bad tree and there's good tree. And you can't get good tree good fruit off the bad tree. And if I can toss something out there real quick, I believe it's uh, the fifteenth. The Billy that was sitting here behind me <clears throat> with our pastors for America. We, a bunch of us, are going down to the City Hall in Dallas at 10 a.m. that day because um, someplace in North Dallas, and I can't remember the Richardson. Oh, I'm Richardson. About yeah, I mean, they're making a whole new Dearborn, mm -hmm. and we don't want it because once they got that, we're going to have Sharia law, and they're going to start coming in the suburbs. And it's City. Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? New, okay. Is it New Jersey? They've already got Sharia law. Oh. A preacher, a preacher went in and they killed him. There's one set up in Memphis and it's just not right here. There's one no, in Michigan Dearborn, as well. There's one in Michigan as well. They threw bottles at, at the Christians. Some mm -hmm. preacher went in like New Jersey, New Hampshire, or somewhere up there where they have a place set up. I can't remember exactly. And it's only, it needs to be verified by you. I just heard it. And I heard it pretty loudly. But I don't know where the source is, but anybody, any, anyway, I, supposedly a preacher went in, they cut his head off, killed him. And well, Christian and shouldn't have went in there. Christians in Dearborn have been trying to give out, you know, pamphlets and right. stuff, and right. Muzzies start throwing rocks at them and stuff, and the cops won't even yeah. protect them. Yeah. That was Dearborn. They're scared, scared of them. Yeah. They're scared of them. Call it Dearborn and scam. This yeah. is our mission. <laughs> <laughs> we opened our arms. To, we opened our arms to anybody that wants, wants to come to immigration. That's nice. Okay, immigrate reform. You want to talk tax reform, immigration reform? Another key word: reform. You're not reforming nothing. You're not reforming right. anything. Right. Okay? You don't talk it and say those words. It's not reform. It's just changing something the way they want it, and they're going to flip it to make it easier to yeah. get their way and make our nation more divided. And that's all it is, is about, about dividing this nation. 